Okay, welcome to the KubeCon Europe uh, virtual summit. This is the policy working group deep dive session. Um, I'm Jipeng from Huawei and Erica. Hi, I'm Erica from Red Hat. Okay, uh, we're going to be talking about all the uh, development uh, happening in the policy working group uh, in Kubernetes, as well as uh, at the CNCF six security level. Okay, we'll be just basically talking through all the interesting things. Okay, uh, this is who we are <laughs> from the Markdown files. Yeah. Yep. Uh, join us regularly on Wednesdays or every other Wednesdays around 4 p.m. We should update that. <laughs> yeah, around that's so, eight, 8 a.m. Pacific 8 time. Yeah, sharp we in the morning. Working. <laughs> yes, we are. That's why I missed it several times. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for East Coast and Europe, especially. Yep. So, uh, we're working to provide an overall architecture that describes current policy-related implications and discussing everything else, future policy and policy architecture for Kubernetes and how that extends into the cloud native ecosystem. Yep. We have been running for like two years, almost two years now. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, as long as, basically around the acquisition of Coros. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, that's something. Couple acquisitions later, we're still at it because yep. <laughs> turn, turns out policy still matters. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think yeah, this slide is about. Um, so I think we we've been seeing like trends, uh, like uh, tidal waves. Um, so Kubernetes, uh, like Envoy, uh, no doubt is the first wave about the cloud native platform. Uh, then we see uh, the emphasis on Prometheus, uh, Jaeger, open tracing. People are start to focusing on the observability, and now I think uh, uh, people are really uh, turning attentions to policies and securities. Right? We we seeing OPA are making like uh, uh, big stages, uh, cloud native, uh, Taft, Notary. Um, from the NYU team, and uh, we see Falco, and a uh, couple other really interesting uh, projects. Yeah, so I think this is where uh, me and Robert <laughs> get into really interesting discussion on the slide. <laughs> uh, In what is cloud native policy? <laughs> what is cloud native policy? Well, this is. I think uh, the bullet points are um, like the things we hope uh, the cloud native policy could become. Um, so I think it uh, goes beyond auditing and compliance. Uh, by that, I mean like for uh, we are seeing things for like resource management and uh, probably uh, many other interesting areas. So it's uh, all encompassing. A policy is an all-encompassing uh, thing, um, and I think Robert uh, makes a good point. Like it's via a a correct tooling that policy could help automate uh, security and many other areas. But policy itself um, rarely <laughs> automates <laughs> security, uh, and. Yeah, policy are usually like logics, so it's definitely it's definitely different from config. Um, um, I, I've been having problem about like uh, uh, just having a YAML based config system. You call it a declarative system. It's not. It's not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, not necessarily. So, but if you have a policy based system, it's it will be a really nice declarative system, uh, meaning you could talk logic, uh, like human readable logic to that system. Yeah, that's very declarative. Okay. 
um, end-to-end -end abstraction, um, yeah, we are not there yet, but hopefully <laughs> we can have like uh, the, the, the policy descriptions and the policy driven mechanism on each layer. Um, so we see OPA for the, um, the policy control on a pretty high level. Um, I think for- Open policy agent. Yeah, open policy agent. Uh, we have like Cilium um, for uh, uh, like uh, policy toward uh, eBPF. We have Falco uh, doing things for runtime policy. That's pretty low level, right? And hopefully in the near future, we can have a, a multi-layer uh, policy mechanisms, then we have the end-to-end -end abstraction. Like every year, uh, every layer, we have a way to talk to the <laughs> uh, using logic uh, to talk to them. And yeah, bring liveness to a cloud, right? It's, it's, it's human talks in logic, not config files. That's, that's, that's machine language. Well, yeah, that that's just something I, I thought of. Uh, yeah, it's a, whereas config is your about, it's not the policy can be configured yeah. and configuration can, yeah, they're, they're related, but not the same. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's interesting that policy is the dynamic in some sense or how do you take a set of principles and make decisions based on dynamic data in a cluster? Yep. Okay. okay. Moving on. Sorry, I forget. I'm the one pushing next. <laughs> Oops. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. I I I think I incorporated a lot of Robert's comments or anything. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, so uh, I think he, he, he made a great point. Uh, controls are needed um, because human and policies defines what controls and uh, what implement that, that control. Yeah, that's, that's very nicely put. And we have very domain specific policy implementations. Um, and hopefully on the like the uh, expression evaluation heuristic level, we can have something really generalized and uh, um, also the architecture. We can we can have something uh, really general. Yeah, I, I think okay. we can just That's yeah quickly. Go over the yeah. This is how policy working group interact with other six. Um, yeah. Basically we, all of them, but <laughs> no. yeah, we, we are pulling the strings. So <laughs> master. Some of the yeah. Some of the places though that it really interacts are when you're talking about the network, which is the first area people often think about yep. configuring fire rules. And the, the off. Any. <laughs> Yeah, so, yes, that was the uh, admin, yeah. RBAC, Our biggest all that. client. Yeah. Yep. But of course, Cloud Native's even bigger than that. Yep. Does, is this blocking on your screen? Can nope. You, nope. Nope. Ah, there we go. Yep. Anyway, okay. Anyway, <laughs> you got a picture. And there we go. Yeah, let's Check it. next. Next. There we go. Yeah. I think we can also quickly go over the things we already we already uh, um, done. <laughs> yeah, some of the areas that we've been exploring are on the very abstract side is some formal verification. Very hard. How do we? <laughs> How do we go from a set of YAML files to knowing that it does what you want it to do? Yep. So we have some Ye example you have it. Yeah, I think this is uh, Robert's uh, Guardian 
proposal. Yeah. I think you see this a lot of how do you know that no one has access to a given resource when you have defined policies in terms of dynamic or labels or label selectors, for instance, in an RBAC system? Yeah. Can you take some amount of, okay, well, we can actually go through and figure that out formally and make sure that what you intended and how you described your intent work. work. Yep. We have a pilot project called Guardian. Please come and participate. Yeah, a lot of math. All you mathy people out there. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect place to come in. Uh, I mean, who doesn't love some math? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. And, all right. All right. So, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, we we we, we, we haven't done a lot uh, in this year, but in the past, the white paper. <laughs> yeah. We, um, the really interesting part is we uh, did a lot of case studies. Uh, in light interesting uh, project and. Uh, the team came over to talk about what, uh, what they are using policy for and uh, what they are hoping policy could, could achieve. Yeah, we try to keep tabs on all the projects that are coming up and connect yeah. people as needed to you know, make yeah. and find common patterns, see what's catching on where, for instance, Kubernetes is lacking or where there can be some collaboration we yeah. will get to some of the collaboration yeah. later yeah also we get to geek out and ask questions to all of the really cool projects so if these are interested uh you can check on youtube and for the presentations yeah lots of kubernetes opa so open policy agent Gatekeeper project uh, for using open policy agent for Kubernetes policy admission controller. Mm -hmm. Istio, of course, the uh, service mesh. Celium is also, is it considered a service mesh at all mm, as well? No, I think Celium is like a level, uh, level network four. Plug, uh, yeah, network, networking policy. The, uh, with the, Spiffy. uh, yeah, that one. uh, using BPF, we, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. another fun, yeah, yeah, fun yeah, area. Spiffy Spire for service discovery and automation. Tough notary in Toto, Toto and Uptain about securing the supply chain. Caverno. Caverno. A, that's another Kubernetes policy admission control. Yeah. Cloud custodian verifying your cloud configurations and like AWS, for instance, with AAM policies. K Rails. From What's Cruz that? from the self driving startup. And yeah. <laughs> And then we do dove in a little bit more into pod security policies and how they can be re work with gate or how gatekeeper can implement pod security policies. Yeah. Let's see. You were not. Looking at okay. Do you want to talk about? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think Jim, uh, especially Jim, has done a lot of work, uh, really great work. And yeah, Kiverno is a, uh, can we say another policy engine um, in addition to OPA? For, for Kubernetes? OPA, OPA as a whole system, right, that contains a a link policy specific language to implement a database to store oh, the policies, yeah. uh, the you know certain plugins, the agents to help you enforce the policy. 
that's really powerful, but, but sometimes that's more than everyone wants. For Kubernetes, one of the things, there are certain kind of cases that you'd like to just define in some Kubernetes resources, have a standardized way and have that enforced within the cluster. Yeah. Running. So that's where Kiverno com is try coming in, where yeah. upon you know, creating a namespace, what kind of certain resources automatically need to be created? For instance, uh, role bindings and other controls uh, lock those who shouldn't be able to do something, and more specific validation or mutation control, mutation, you know, yeah. marking resources automatically with certain labels or, you know, directing pods uh, in their scheduling automatically based on the namespace or validating that only certain labels are used, those sorts of things. Yep. Cloud Custodian. I think Cloud Custodian is another really interesting project. Um, they are mostly like working on the cloud level, right? They... Yeah, the, there isn't a clear boundary necessarily between like your cluster, your workloads and the, the platform, or the cloud or, you know, resources it's running on. So securing that all across in consistent ways is important. Yeah. Multi-cloud is a big thing these days, but that means <laughs> how do you consistently, you might use Terraform to consistently provision your infrastructure, but now how do you ensure that you have your policies and access controls, for instance, for all of the different clouds done correctly? Yep. That is where yep. Cloud Custodian comes in. That's a nice pitch <laughs> for the <laughs> <laughs> multi-cloud story. It's it's a big use case. Of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Hey, Ray. Ray. Yeah. They, yeah, I, I, I still remember they, uh, they had a great presentation. I think they mentioned they, yeah. they actually use Google Groups for, for their, like, um, uh, tenancies uh, system, <laughs> which is really, really interesting. Thinking from their base, from like the um, employee level all the way down. Yeah, I think that makes the, sense. Yeah, they mentioned they are running a really big workload uh, on Kubernetes, and like each department has to be isolated uh, uh, from each other for for whatever reason, and uh, then they have the K rail uh, developed. Uh, to deal with their specific uh, situations. Ah, Pod security policies. <laughs> so what's the latest? I, I, I haven't been able to catch up with the... Um, I need to check the latest on that issue. Uh, what I, issue is it? Do you, I, like, uh, has PSP entirely, like, retired and uh, all the things going to gatekeeper? No, that, that is in some sense never 100% going to happen. It just, let it me just took a them. long, long time. Mm -hmm. Longer than us. There, do, 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 do. I will find the issue at some point. Okay. Once Google Docs can load. Hmm. I swear there was I 
Okay, that was a bad attempt. <sighs> Sorry. No worries. Well, uh, anyways, Seagoth session possibly will will mention the, the progress on PSP. <laughs> PSPs are a necessary and used Kubernetes built-in mechanism to ensure pods that don't have proper permissions are run in less privileged contexts. Mm -hmm. it, has, it languishes in beta right now. <laughs> One of the problems we deal with in policy is how do you safely turn on policy without breaking everyone? Yeah. How do you move forward? How do you, how do you change policies? <laughs> safely, especially when changing a policy can make it so you can't change a policy if you do it wrong. So one way though, if you already are using OPA, Gatekeeper is a great way to basically get the same functionality. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, moving down the stack, Elko, you want to uh, take this one? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I haven't been following up with the RPI initiative. Has this like came to any fruition? Run. There Good. is the, there are runtime policies. Yeah, I re I only remember we did we did uh we did couple session with the Falco team, but yeah. kind of lost track on how 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 things uh, how things went. <laughs> yeah, but this is uh I think this is one really interesting thing for policy to. Uh, to happen on um, low level, a really low level. Yeah, part of the, but when we say runtime, it's when you have you know, your containers or other workloads literally executing instructions, how do you secure yeah, that? Yeah. One way is to have agents on the node, in various ways that are reading policies, checking for violations, blocking, uh, violating actions. I think they can even combine the uh, RPI with, with Cilium. So you have uh, policy checkings uh, on the runtime for the pods and you can check in on the pod uh, networking if something violated. Yeah. And you can you can you can do all the thing with eBPF. <laughs> Just writing some eBPF uh, programs. Check upon those. Just following along with the evolution from monitoring to policy. <laughs> but, uh, it's the next natural place. <laughs> all right. All right. What? Yeah. For all of these different things, quite often policy projects like this want to use the standardized Kubernetes API to define policies. So one thing we are, want to do is standardize what that looks like so that tools can be more easily interchanged. And that, you know, truly built on top of these can interact together. Yep. That brings us to our first policy project, uh, custom resource, the policy report. Sub project. Uh, pub, sure. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Lots of different tools are helping us develop this, and you, you know, alpha testing the API. 
or you know engaged what's what's us. polaris polaris hi is it like a, a, a kubernetes project or haven't uh it is fair wind ops oh yeah 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 polaris um Variety of checks to make sure Kubernetes pods and controllers are configured using best practices. Oh, cool. Ha has a dashboard, a validating webhook, and a command line tool. Cool. Obviously, a lot, of, a lot <laughs> has happened in the policy <laughs> field. There's always new projects. Yeah. yeah. Is that where? Then, all right. Ah, <laughs> oh, we have a nice table. Yeah, maybe and we should I color this. <laughs> cluster <laughs> image. Image. Uh, like, where are you looking? Sorry. Like the trivi, the category is image, meaning for ah. doc, Docker image? Yeah. Ah, scanning. Yeah, maybe they're for Docker image security. Yeah, uh, you know, make sure that you don't, you're not running malicious containers. <laughs> this one's from Aqua Security. Oh, uh, cool. So they gave a presentation last week. Yeah, mm -hmm. they gave a presentation. It, you know, make sure that you're running only validated images, detecting vulnerabilities <clears throat> with it. Um, it comes with a pretty nice dashboard interface as well. I think it's, yeah, mostly uh, not so much a direct image as a scanner on to show it right now. Um, I think there's some future plans. Yeah, I think, uh, cool. yeah, you just, then, Cube, cube edge is another sort of conformance might be, I think, is a bit a, the right category of do you have your, is your cluster set up the way you think it will be? They're using policy so, for, for like benchmarking the cluster? I believe a cube bench is like, are you following best practices? Ah. Uh. Yeah. So they are scanning for, for, for things? Yeah. Um, do you have the... So uh, uh, this also for, comes... For like security uh, best practice? And like CIS uh, benchmarks, ah, ah. for instance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the ways, for instance, some of Aqua Security pro, uh, also has a project called Starboard. One of the things oh. that they're reporting and running are CIS, Q, Kubernetes oh. benchmark tests. So that can also, hopefully soon, uh, be reported back in the standard format. Yeah, that's pretty cool. As you can see, we have more policy tools and engines and ways to do it than we can keep track of. <laughs> <laughs> than we can ever imagine. What is our policy on policies? <laughs> our interface, we have a couple few things. The place, the policy report is meant to capture a higher level, not necessarily a my, like second by second a uh, report that you know at a report at the level that makes sense for to be stored as a custom resource in kubernetes at cd want it to be flexible enough to show for what all of these different tools and compliance needs oh. you know, allow enough detail so that you know auditors and cluster admins can understand what has happened or is going on and why but it still needs to be clear and standardized enough that yep. 
standard Kubernetes tools can manage it. Sure. We have some uh, examples within the um, policy prototypes GitHub repo. I think uh, Kaverno and the uh, multi-cluster project from Red Hat have some examples submitted of what the kind of policy reports that they would be creating with their tools. Okay, we have scope, um, summary, results. Hey, this is pretty nice. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it turns out having more input, you get better things and learn things you didn't know. <laughs> oh, maybe I should go. Uh, we have the alpha sort of merged into that repo. Uh, any pull requests or issues are welcome. Uh, we're working right now to get more tools directly implementing it and testing it out so that you know, we can move to beta eventually. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So, all right. This is our like um, our four deliverables so far. I fit into the big picture thing. So we have CRDs. We have form of electrification. Really interesting. We have the try to have a standard way to interact. Um, and uh, the RPI is for the data plane. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Please join the combo. Join the and conversation. Up. Up. Should that slide be deleted? Uh, there's a backup slide in case okay. <laughs> people are interested in SMT. <laughs> what, the, <laughs> what the heck is formal verification? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, got it. Yeah, it's we were trying important. to entice the the people who didn't quite get the math <laughs> part of it. Yeah, <laughs> got it. All right. All right. Please join join us, or we look forward to seeing and talking more about policy. Yep. Okay. I think that's it for our session. Let me stop.